From hidden tombs filled with priceless treasures to ancient artifacts that shed light on ancient civilizations, Egypt has continuously revealed its secrets to archaeologists and history enthusiasts alike. With more amazing things being discovered all the time, we're going to count down the top 15 most unbelievable discoveries in Egypt. Starting with number 15, the Hidden Palace. While archaeologists uncovered the Temple of Ramses II about 160 years ago, in March of 2019, they found a secret royal palace that was located inside of an adjoining building. Before this find, most historians believed that the temple was mainly used for ceremonial purposes. However, historians now believe that pharaohs like Ramesses II spent considerable amounts of time here venerating the dead. Number 14. The Unfinished Obelisk While most obelisks are completely erect and intact, the unfinished obelisk is a bit of a standout. At 42 meters in height, it's the largest known ancient obelisk. However, it was never completed. In the early 1920s, archaeologist Reginald Engelbach determined that the quality of the stone was to blame. That's because when the obelisk was carved out, cracks and fissures in the granite led to it being kept in the ground. And as a result, it now remains uncompleted in the dug-up quarry of Aswan in Egypt. Number 13. King Tut's Tomb the boy pharaoh King Tut passed away when he was just 18 years old, and for years no one knew where he was buried. However, on November 26 of 1922, archaeologists Howard Carter and Lord Carnarvon discovered the interior chambers of his tomb. Inside, they found it miraculously intact. It contained four rooms with several thousand objects, with the most impressive being the three-layer coffin that held the 3,000-year-old mummified body of King Tut. Now, this leaves an important question unanswered. What took so long to find it? Well, you see, unlike most tombs, King Tut's was located in a very mundane location. This has led many to speculate that it was actually made for someone else and repurposed to be used by King Tut since he died so young. Number 12. The Saqqara Bird Of all the Egyptian artifacts dug up in the late 1800s, few were as weird as the Saqqara Bird. Excavated from the Padi Imen tomb in Saqqara, Egypt, it dates back to the year 200 BC. With a small 18-centimeter wingspan, the small wooden statue doesn't look like much. However, some historians believe it could be far more than it seems to be. While most believe that it is a simple figure of the ancient Egyptian god Horus, others believe that instead it's a model of an ancient plane, since its features resemble a stabilizing tail, wings, and landing gears. However, to date, we simply don't know for sure. Number 11. The Hatshepsut Mummy The second of just 12 female pharaohs, Hatshepsut was a regent until her son Tomothis III became of age. When she died, she was given a top-tier mummification fit for a royal. However, for some strange reason, when her sarcophagus was uncovered in 1902, her body simply wasn't inside. For decades, Egyptologists had no idea why. However, in 1989, a tooth in a box with her name on it was uncovered. When compared to the teeth of the mummies around her, it was found to be a direct match to the mummy that was supposedly her wet nurse. As a result, many historians believe that her body was moved from her own sarcophagus to the wet nurse's. However, exactly why this happened is still a mystery. Number 10. A Water Tunnel while a water tunnel may not sound like the most exciting ancient site out there, the context around it makes it one of the most incredible discoveries in antiquity. You see, about 20 meters below the Temple of Osiris near Alexandria in Egypt, there exists a water tunnel. This 1,300-meter-long and 2-meter-tall tunnel did, as the name suggests, carry water. In fact, it's believed that it served as an aqueduct for over a thousand years, all while carrying drinking water to thousands upon thousands of people. Beyond its utility, the water tunnel has also sparked a lot of curiosity. On one hand, the tunnel has been called a geometric miracle. After all, it is an exact replica of the Eupalinos Tunnel in Greece, which is considered to be one of the most important engineering achievements of antiquity. But on the other, the tunnel also has its fair share of strange artifacts. For example, within the tunnel, archaeologists found two alabaster heads, one of which likely depicts a king, and another which depicts an unknown notable. Beyond these heads, there are also several coins and statues of Egyptian deities. And this is all somewhat unusual. After all, if the tunnel is supposedly to simply deliver water, then why were these artifacts inside there? 
To add to their mystery, the temple is also close to an area that's believed to be the burial place of the famous Mark Anthony and Cleopatra. Therefore, there will likely be continued excavations in the area in order to get to the bottom of these mysteries. Number 9. The Judean Exodus in the Bible, the story of the Jews fleeing Egypt has been integral to the narrative of much of the Old Testament. However, the actual historical grounding of the story is not all that clear. After all, even Jewish scholars have contested that historical claims that at least 600,000 people crossed the Sinai Desert during the Exodus are unrealistic. However, there is some rich debate as to whether or not a far smaller group of Jews did make such a journey. To date, a few discoveries have helped us get a better picture. For example, there are old Egyptian documents that suggest there were movements of small groups of ancient Semitic-speaking peoples into and out of Egypt during the 18th and 19th dynasties. These groups may have been enslaved peoples that then moved on to Israel, bringing the story of their exodus with them and molding it into the greater shared history of the Jewish people. A hymn book by the pharaoh Akhenaten has also been found that translates almost word for word with Psalm 104 of the Hebrew Bible. And while the Egyptian version is supposed to be a hymn built to honor the Egyptian sun god Aten, there are some scholars who believe that the link may be able to be drawn between this hymn and a Jewish exodus. In 2022, there was even a hoard of rare Egyptian coins found in one of the caves in the Judean desert. These were minted under the reign of Greek Egyptian King Ptolemy VI, and due to their age, it's believed that they may be evidence of a Jewish migration into the area. Now, in reality, all of this evidence is far from conclusive. However, they all could be stepping stones that suggest some sort of Jewish exodus from ancient Egypt really did happen. Number 8. Deir el Medina While Deir el Medina may not be a household name, it stands apart as being one of the most significant finds in the history of Egyptology. The first proper examinations of the site were conducted by Ernesto Schiaparelli between 1905 and 1909. These were continued by a French team directed by Bernard Bruyere between 1922 and 1951, and what those two teams found was nothing short of incredible. In essence, it's a town fit with 68 houses that were all built to house the craftsmen that worked on the royal pyramids of ancient Egypt. These homes housed what would be today considered to be the middle-class families. Upon further investigation, they were filled with copious records that documented the happenings of everyday life. It seems to be the case that these craftsmen would work in shifts that were on six days on, two days off, and would camp close to their work during this period, only to return to Deir el Medina on their days off. Unlike much of ancient Egypt, those in town were believed to be largely literate, with most being able to read and many potentially even being able to write, which was a pretty big deal during this time. Given the fact that the craftsmen were all experts at creating tombs for the royals, they themselves would often build their own tombs in their time off, leading to the creation of some of the most beautiful commoner tombs in all of ancient Egypt. Beyond this, records also suggest that they lived in an environment with religious tolerance, where women were given exceptionally long lists of rights, and the workers were involved in the first recorded strike action in human history. So, yeah, it's fair to say that Deir el Medina is of great importance. Moving on to number 7, the Khufu ship. While wooden ships are beautiful, they don't tend to survive for thousands of years. However, the Khufu ship seems to be an exception to the rule. Discovered in the Pharaoh Khufu's tomb in 1954, the boat had fallen apart into a grand total of 1,224 fragments. Slowly but surely, archaeologists took these fragments and figured out exactly how they should be pieced together. After 10 years of researching in ancient Egyptian shipbuilding techniques, the Khufu ship was finally put back together again, and the end result was absolutely incredible. At 43 meters in length and 6 meters wide, this 4,500-year-old ship was absolutely massive. Yet, despite its age, it was so well built that it would reportedly be able to sail today if put into a lake or a river. It's because of these incredible features that the Khufu ship is widely considered to be one of the oldest, largest, and best-preserved vessels from antiquity. However, to this day, nobody really knows what the Khufu ship was used for. On one hand, it was built in the style of a solar barge. This was a ritual vessel that ancient Egyptians believed would carry a resurrected king across the heavens with the sun god Ra. Since the ship shows signs of being used in water, there's reason to believe that it carried the king's embalmed body from Memphis to Giza. 
Others believe that King Khufu used the ship while still alive. These historians believe that it was a pilgrimage ship of sorts. Such a vessel would transport the king on his visits to holy places, and when he died, the ship would be buried with him for use in the afterlife. In any case, while this mystery may not be solved for some time, if you'd like to see the ship for yourself, you can find it displayed at the Grand Egyptian Museum in Giza. Number 6. Protective Tattoos if you wanted to get a new tattoo, where would you put it? Well, for many of you, it might be something small on your ankle, something written across your leg maybe, or even a sleeve down your entire arm. However, in ancient Egypt, it was common for women to get a tattoo across their lower back. The story goes that while excavating the planned worker town of Deir al Medina, archaeologists found some strange mummies. While they would never unwrap a mummy from their bandages, they noticed that some looters who had been in the tomb had unwrapped part of six of the women. What they found on this unwrapped skin was a strange tattoo. Seeming to go across the women's backs, their tattoos seemed to have symbolic value. For example, on the back of one, there was a depiction of the god Bess and a bowl. This imagery is related to ritual purification during the weeks after childbirth. On another, a wedjet or Eye of Horus was discovered alongside a possible image of Bess wearing a feathered crown. In tandem, both these images suggest that the tattoo was related to protection and healing. Now, if that wasn't cool enough, there was a zigzag line pattern that may represent a marsh. This is notable because many ancient medical texts associated marshes with the cooling waters used to relieve pain from menstruation or childbirth. While it is hard to know all the details, these tattoos seem to suggest that women would get protective birth-related prints along their back. These would function a lot like a lucky charm or a magic amulet, if you will, supposedly protecting the mother before, during, and after childbirth. To be clear, more research will still need to be done to see how widespread tattooing was. However, these mummies of common people suggest that getting a fertility tattoo across your back was likely a popular practice. Number 5. The Rosetta Stone While there are plenty of incredible discoveries on this list, few have been quite as useful to academics as the Rosetta Stone. Likely made in the year 203 BC, it's a royal decree that was made to announce the one-year anniversary of the rule of King Ptolemy of Egypt. Now, at face value, the stone really isn't all that unique. After all, these announcement stones were essentially just PSAs that were copied and spread throughout the empire in large quantities. However, despite being so widespread, very few exist today, and the Rosetta Stone is particularly important because it was written in three different languages. You see, the decree is not just inscribed in Egyptian hieroglyphics, which would be the language of the academics, but also in Demotic, which was the language of ordinary Egyptian people, and Ancient Greek, which was the language of Egypt's Greek administration. Why is this important? Well, until this point, historians hadn't been able to decipher ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics. However, since scholars could still understand ancient Greek, and since Demotic is somewhat similar to the Coptic language of modern-day Egyptians, academics such as Jean-Francois Champollion and Thomas Young were able to decipher it. As a result, the Rosetta Stone has since become a critical tool in helping to decipher hieroglyphics across all ancient Egyptian texts. However, what makes the Rosetta Stone even more interesting is that it was not found in a conventional way. That's because the Rosetta Stone was discovered on July 15, 1799, by none other than the armies of Napoleon. The story goes that while French soldiers were digging foundations for a fort, they struck a very old wall. It was in this old wall that the Rosetta Stone was discovered, and this was quickly set aside for further research. Yet when Napoleonic Egypt fell to the British in 1801, the stone was handed over to the Brits as part of the peace deal. Ever since, it's been on display at the British Museum in London. Number 4. King Tut's Drunk Driving The famous King Tut passed away at the age of 18, and for years nobody was sure exactly why. It was clear that he suffered from malaria at the time of death, and for years many experts believed that an infection was his ultimate undoing. Where this infection came from, nobody's been sure of until 2010. That's because it was in 2010 that a group of Egyptologists radiologically examined the pharaoh's mummy. What they found has been the subject of debate to this day. That's because they determined that King Tut's infection came from a drunk carriage driving accident. The theory suggests that King Tut got in a high-speed chariot accident while boozed up on wine. This disaster gave him life-threatening leg fractures, and over time his legs became infected, leading to a slow and painful death. 
Supporters of this theory point to the items in King Tut's tomb as clues. You see, it's believed that ancient Egyptians were buried with everyday objects that could be used in the afterlife. Since King Tut's tombs had six chariots, armor, and a stash of wine, some experts believe this is proof that he was a warrior king. Furthermore, since he had two well-aligned legs but a clear leg injury, the archaeologists believe that he had been an able-bodied person whose broken leg likely came about during a chariot accident. And while his mummy does currently have a club foot, these experts believe that this club foot formed after the mummification process rather than before it. Now, critics have instead claimed that King Tut was born with a club foot, and as a result, it would have been impossible for him to stand up in a chariot, making the idea that he was a warrior king impossible. They also point to the fact that fruit seeds were found in his tomb, as they believe these indicate that he was receiving medical treatment. And while these experts have not ruled out that such an accident could have occurred in a special sitting chariot, they claim that the idea that King Tut died after drunk driving is wishful thinking. Number 3. The Great Pyramid of Giza Of all the things to be excavated in Egypt, the Great Pyramid of Giza is easily the most famous. Serving as the tomb of the Pharaoh Khufu, it's the largest pyramid in the world, measuring in at a height of 138.5 meters. For reference, this is so tall that it would remain as the tallest building in the world until the completion of a cathedral over a thousand years later. In fact, it's so significant that it's one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, and is the only one of these wonders to still be standing today. Now, in order to build this pyramid, the pharaohs enlisted about 100,000 laborers, all of whom would work in three-month cycles, and after 20 years of laborers cutting and stacking all 2.3 million limestone blocks, the pyramid was finally completed. What's incredible about this effort is that it was not only massive, but also led to the creation of a building that would be near impossible to replicate by modern standards. After all, scientific analysis done on the pyramid show that the dimensions are extremely close to the golden ratio which is incredible given the fact that it was built mostly by hand using no modern machinery or techniques. This has made the Great Pyramid fodder for conspiracy theorists who claim that the pyramid had to have been built with outside help from aliens. However, the reality is that archaeological evidence suggests that teams of humans using sleds and basic machinery are probably all that's behind this impressive structure. Now, in terms of actual usage, the function of the Great Pyramid was quite simple. It was used to house the pharaoh and his queen in the afterlife. However, this baseline knowledge doesn't mean that new discoveries aren't being made that are shifting the way we perceive this impressive monument. For example, earlier this year, a 9-meter-long hidden hallway was discovered. While its exact use is still unclear, its purpose is to redistribute the pyramid's weight around the entrance point. However, further research has to be conducted to figure out all the specifics. Number 2. The Lost City of Thanos Heraklion While it is easy for things like ships, documents, or treasure troves to be lost to the sands of time, losing an entire city is pretty uncommon. Yet that seems to be exactly what happened with Thanos Heraklion. When looking at the historical record, it's a difficult place to decipher. Ancient texts made very little mention of the city, and the info was so confusing and conflicting that most historians thought that Thanos and Heraklion were two separate places. However, in 1933, an RAF pilot flying over Abu Kir Bay saw ruins under the water. While he allegedly told a member of the Egyptian royal family of the discovery, little was done until 1998. That's because it was in this year that a French archaeologist, Franco Godillo, and his team of scientists screened the area. They soon discovered a city of underwater ruins that included 64 ships, 700 anchors, treasure trove of gold coins, statues standing 5 meters in height, and most notably, the remains of a massive temple to the god Amun Gareb, and the tiny sarcophagi for the animals that were brought there as offerings. They also found that the city was a major center for trade, and had a large network of canals that have led many to consider it to be the Venice of ancient Egypt. However, the question still remains as to how a 2,300-year-old city ended up 6.5 kilometers away from the coast of the Egyptian city of Alexandria. Most historians believe that over a long enough period of time, the city was weakened by a combination of earthquakes, tsunamis, and rising sea levels. But the city was truly done for when, at the end of the 2nd century BC, what was probably a severe flood managed to liquefy the soil on the central island's canals. This caused its buildings to rapidly collapse into the water, and while some remained in the ruins, most fled as the city was slowly decimated. And while settlements there remained during the Roman era and the beginning of the Arab rule, by the end of the 8th century AD, the entire city had slipped into the sea. 
Number 1. The Greater Temple of Abu Simbel While most ancient monuments are restored and revered, the Greater Temple of Abu Simbel narrowly avoided being completely submerged underwater. That's because until very recently, the entire site was completely forgotten about. You see, Abu Simbel consists of two massive temples that were built by Pharaohs Ramses II between 1264 and 1244 BC. Constructed in what was then newly conquered Egyptian territory of Nubia, the temple was mainly created for propaganda purposes. The idea behind it was to show the Nubians the power and might of Egypt. Given that it's carved right into the side of a mountain and looks quite imposing, I'd say it did its job. However, this power and might would only be on display for so long. That's because by the 6th century BC, sand already covered many of the statues on display, and eventually, a sand dune covered the entire site. It remained this way for thousands of years until the year 1813. It was rediscovered by Swiss researcher Johann Ludwig Barkart. This led to a gradual excavation effort, although this was all threatened when plans to build the Aswan High Dam were announced. This dam threatened to completely flood the area around the temple, so therefore a campaign began to physically move the monument to another location. While it did cost the modern equivalent of about $400 million, required lots of international support, and took four years, in what was considered an engineering miracle, the entire temple was moved to a site located 65 meters higher and 200 meters farther back from the river. Beyond being an impressive historical site, Abu Simbel also has some pretty clever engineering behind it. You see, it's got several sculptures depicting various Egyptian gods, and it was built in such a way that on each and every October 22nd and February 22nd, the rays of the sun would penetrate the sanctuary and illuminate every sculpture on the back wall, with the exception of the Bata, who was associated with the underworld. While it's not sure exactly why these dates are chosen, many believe that it's because these were Ramses II's birthday and coronation day, making them of special importance. In any case, the fact that such a phenomenon was able to be engineered thousands of years ago is pretty impressive. I'll see you guys next time. The Top 5 Show has launched channel memberships. Thank you to our channel members.